another chapter I'm talking about is the unlocking the chemistry of life. And this is quite fascinating because I think as Christians, this DNA aspect is, is really something that we need to sort of say, well, okay, we've got DNA and we know it's code. Hey, the scientists have showed us there's code involved, there's four bases. And that's compared to two bases for um, basically Morse code or for computers. And so whenever you have code, something had to design it. Simple. And that's where I basically explore the whole aspect of DNA and reveal there has to be a designer behind it. And here's a couple of interesting quotes. There's a Dr. Michael Behe. He's written a fantastic book called, you know, what is it? Anyway, um, no, sorry, mind blank. Okay, this is what he says. He says, the information storage density of DNA is several trillion times that of our most advanced computer chips. And this is written back in like 1982 when our advanced computers were about 100 megahertz. So now we're only at 1.2, so we've got a trillion ways to still to go. And this is an interesting one, another one for um, computer geeks like me. It's by G Bill Gates, and he says, DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software we've ever created. Wow. Now, some people, sort of macroevolutionists claim, and, and the newspaper, they claim that we've, like, come from apes, and they, like, as an example, they say, or evidence, they say we share about 97 to 99 percent of a chimp's genes. We think, wow, that's pretty good evidence. But there's one problem. When you look at the length of a DNA chain, it's approximately a chain of one million nucleotides. Those are like little bits of the chain. So, and it has to be in perfect sequence. So they're not really, um, they haven't really got a leg to stand on after all. And it also equals several million unique spelling differences. This morning we were actually going to show a PowerPoint presentation, but hey, computer glitches, unfortunately. And there's a bacteria flagellum, and this is what's really fascinating because it um, has a propeller which rotates at about 100,000 revolutions per minute. And that's like the fastest propeller that we could even design, I reckon. And what's fascinating is that when they've like, looked at because they can only look at it under a microscope, and what was really interesting was that it actually replica replicates the motor. There's like a, basically a bearing, a rotor, a stator, etc. This is an interesting quote by an agnostic called Robert Jastro. He's an astronomer. He, and this is it's quite um, humorous. He says, for the scientist who's lived by his faith, in the power of reason, the story ends like a bad dream. He has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He is about to conquer the highest peak. As he pulls himself over the final rock, he is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. There's one up for their theologians, eh? I think it's quite amusing that agnostic can um, basically write that.